ourselves for the next, give it or take, 10 months. Why? This is going to be a series of talks that we will put together um, for about this book, Thought in Life by Emmanuel. The book actually has 30 chapters. We'll see a little bit in a little bit. And what we would like to do is to break down into each session that we are here, we will cover at least three chapters, okay? But I want to go back to what we were just talking about. We already talked about thought. We talk about life. We see life, right, when we come here. And guess what? We're going to do more and more and more because that way we learn more. We have a different perspective. And that's one of the things that I would like to call everyone's attention tonight um, as we start this journey, when I say we, definitely we, because I would like to invite everyone, despite the fact that we will be showing pictures and a lot of the text as well, because I don't want certain things that Emmanuel brings in this book to go astray, not unnoticed or not noticed or unnoticed, I would like to invite everyone to really make this practical. How? As we were talking about it, as we were studying together, think of something that you can apply to teachings in your life. And please, 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 do not be afraid to share. Do not be afraid to share. We will try to obviously open up for questions and answers as we do at the end. But during these sessions, we would like to invite everyone to stop, think, how can I use this in my life? Or how can I help someone? Not that we're going to go and slap somebody in the face, oh, look what I learned, right? No, that's not the purpose but for us to really make this practical and learn with this. We are trying to make the book available for here for us here at the SSB. We have not found find any copies that we can purchase, but it will soon. I know some of you have, right, Paula? <laughs> and for those, um, this does not make anybody who speaks Portuguese um, any better off, but the book is online in PDF but it's in Portuguese. But we'll definitely make it available for you in English here at the SSP so that since we'll be studying three chapters at a time, you can read before you come here. You can read, study, revisit, as we learned with John Angelis tonight. And we can discuss it better here when we come to the SSP. This book, well, let's start about the reason why we're bringing this. The reason I do not know. <laughs> but when I came across the book last year, I was like, you know, it would be nice to study a little bit more. Instead of creating another time that we can come and study, we already have the study group on Thursdays. We already have another something else to schedule on Mondays. We could create another day to come and study. It would be really beneficial to us. But why not create a series of talks that we can go study, digest, really put into work, and then perhaps in the next session when we start the, extra, the, the next uh, three chapters, we can kind of go back into some of the aspects and say, you know what, I applied this in my life. Now it's working better. Now I try to do this, right? It would be nice. But the reason why we're here today, only God knows. <laughs> only God knows. The book, again, is, let us take the, let's give an example. Imagine if we are in the spirit realm, right? And one of us say, you know what, is there a possibility for, a book, some kind of guideline that we can read, right, as we go and enter the physical body or re-enter the physical body. That's exactly what happened with Emmanuel. He was asked to present some kind of work that it was, would be practical for people as they're reincarnating, they're going back to the physical body, their new reincarnation, and apply it. This is some, some guidelines, some basic pages well, he says it's kind of not basic, but very subtle. But we will see that's very deep. But it's, this is basically what Emmanuel did. Put something together, which was also a compilation of the work that they do in the regenerative work or works before us spirits reincarnate wherever he is in the spiritual plane. Don't ask me where it is, but this is the message that is actually at the beginning of the book. So it's a guideline for all of us. Now, we may think, well, Leo, too late. 
It took you 30 years, and I say 30 years, I'm not 30, but <laughs> I'm a little bit older. You know, given another 10 years, at least 10 years old, we can actually understand what is, is in here and understand um, and pass it along. But yes, it took me a little bit long. It's okay. We're all progressing. But we can still apply this in our lives today. Because whatever we plant in the now, guess what? It's going to help us in the future. And this also reminds us, the same thought also reminds us that whatever we are, wherever we are right now, it's a consequence of what we have done. Another enlightenment is something that came to mind to say, um, because you know, at work in the financial world uh, that I work, we always try to get to the root cause of things. Any company, I would presume, would, be do, would do the same thing. When we really get to the deep bottom of our concerns at a company, at a situation, a critical situation, we try to do what? To get to the root cause of it. What caused it? And with that in mind, again, we can apply the same thing to our lives. Whatever we are, wherever we are, it's a consequence of what? Of thought. Thought is life, thought and life. So think of this, every time we have a problem, every time we meet here, every time we go to work, every time we have uh, some kind of issues with one another, or sometimes when we encounter problem with matter too. It's a consequence of our thought. The root cause is right in our thought. So again, let's bring forward a little bit and think, so whatever I think now, it's going to create a consequence in the future. We take this for granted. As much as we take for granted the matter that is in front of us, this physical body, everything, we take in, in for granted this idea of thought. No wonder Joanna the Angelis reminds us, sometimes we think that we have seen it so much of it, we need to see it again. We need to read it again. And we need to be humble enough to say, there is more to learn. There is more to learn. So this book, Published in 1958, yes, 70 years, right? Or, yeah, 70 years, am I right? 70, what is it, 60, 60, 1958, 60, see, help me with my math here, 59 years, 58. So, 8, 2018. Hmm? Guys, 60 years. 60 years. <laughs> no, I, saw, I, saw, I heard some 58, 59, 60. Okay, well, let's get together. 60. 6 zero. 1958, 60 years in our hands, you know, for us to work, for us to develop ourselves, and brings topics as such. Tonight we will cover the mirror of life, our will, and cooperation, but it talks about education, association, suggestion, society, the body, children, family. Tolerance, prayer, ills, death, love, all of these beautiful topics here. And again, we will try to cover at least three chapters per session. Um, if we can do a little bit more, we'll do so. So the idea is that for the next 10 months, we have parts of the book that we will be talking about it. We would like to invite as well the youth to really pay attention to this because I'm 28. You guys are what? 17? No, I'm not 28. 17, right? 13, 14, 16. I don't want to guess anybody's age. But you guys have more time. And the, the moment that, the, the earlier that you master this, I'm, I don't want to say master because it takes a while. It takes many reincarnations to master this idea. But the moment that you understand it better, guess what? You guys will make better choices as well. Better choices that we made in our lives, right? And perhaps for us that are 28 as well, 26 like me, we'll make, <laughs> right, Chris? <laughs> we'll be making better choices as well for the next 40 years. So the idea is for us to work together, especially once we get the book in our hands here. And I would like to invite everyone to read before they come. So I, want, I will not start with the actual book. I want to start with a passage of Genesis. Because what we see here is something that Emmanuel is not creating it, but it's actually, again, an giving emphasis to this idea of thought. And it's nothing new, 
we can read it here. Joanna De Angelis have several books as well that talks about the thought, the will, as we will see today, cooperation, all these things. But it, um, Kardec, in the Genesis chapter 14, oops, excuse me, has a passage um, on chapter 14 out of 14. It talks about the fluids, how we act on the fluids, universal cosmic fluid. And he says the following, the spirit acts upon the spiritual fluids, but they do not manipulate them like humans manipulate gases. Instead, they use the help of thought and will. Thought and will are for spirits what hands are for humans. Or two humans, excuse me, or two humans. And I stop right here because it's very vast, it's very long. But nothing new. And Emmanuel is taking this concept, this idea in the spiritual plane and giving some information for us to work here in the physical plane. We spirits incarnated, now we have the hand. So whatever the hand does, guess what? Before it does it, there's need to be what? A thought, a will. That's why I said we take for granted even the material thing is in front of us. So it's very easy for us to go through our day-to-day -day lives and take for granted the reasoning why, the root cause of it. Very easy, very, very easy. So I want you guys to understand that it's nothing new, but we need to go deeper. And we brought this passage to say, look, there are other parts that we're gonna be studying that we can go deeper into it. When we talk about, for example, work, when we talk about society, when we talk about the physical body, that we need to go back and even our science, conventional science nowadays is helping, is already up there giving us a push to say, there is more, there is more that we can learn. But let's go on with the actual book. We would like to start with the first chapter that is entitled, The Mirror of Life. Bear with me. There will be, like I said, uh, parts of the book that I would like to read and we'll bring on the screen and we'll make the parallels that we'd like to do with our lives. The mirror of life. The mind stands as the mirror of life in all places. And then Emmanuel says the following. In its ascension from the earth, playing towards God under the leadership of Christ, it may be compared to the rough diamond excavated from the dark interior of the earth, which, under the guidance of stone cutter, the stone cutter, advances towards the magnificence of the light. Stop right here. <laughs> so we're here. Every time we think, every time we receive, we, we could communicate with one another, we're receiving something. We think that, oh, it's just me, it's just Leo. We're vibrating. And every time I do something or I say something or I think of something, I'm vibrating and I'm receiving it back. And we'll see a little bit more in depth here. But the point that I would like to make as we start with this book is what Emmanuel says, that we are ascending to God. We're giving the opportunity to have discernment, we will talk about the will later on, to make choices, unlike some other animals on planet Earth, and we're ascending to God. So we have a, a, a ending point, if we can say that. It's not the ending point that we will die, but our evolving process will come to an end, that we will become so evolved that we will be close to God, just as Jesus was, and Jesus being this guiding model that we have and we learn with spiritism that is guiding us. We can't run from that. And that is beautiful. That is really a point that we would like to make so we're not lost in this idea that I'm doing wrong or this person's doing wrong, the world is going crazy, there is no more um, um, way out of this. We're all going through this. So as we think, as we start to think from now on, let us remember that. That is liberating. Because we think that everything is lost, right? 2018 is just 2018. No, it's 2018 that we're going <laughs> towards God. And hopefully that will be the case for all, all of you as well. 
We recognize the heart as the reflection, as the brain, as the reflection, as the brain, as this in the brain, as the center of its undulations, generating the force of thoughts that can move, refinement and sublimation. Let me just make sure that I got the right information here. I am so sorry. Uh, we recognize the heart as the reflection and the brain as the center of its undulations, generating the force of thought that can move, create, transform, destroy, and rebuild in order to uh, achieve refinement and sublimation. Sorry about the uh, typos there. So it's important for us to think and go back to what we read in the Genesis, that we are constantly creating, moving. As we think, we are doing it. As we said before, and I will go ahead and say over and over again, the chairs that we're sitting on, this book, the microphone, everything, there was a generating thought before it happened. It doesn't dis just disappear as the spirit, the spirit, us, when we don't have the physical body, can manipulate the universal cosmic fluid can do. We need the hand. We need the hammer. We need the chisel. We need the things that will actually help us perfect matter to come to the end point, right? To what we can see, right? So we are constantly creating, and we can't run from that, okay? The mutual, mutual interchange vibrates throughout every realm of the universe. Everything is in a state of flux and renewal under the principles of independence and repercussion. We're not alone. We are not alone. When we, something else that we underestimate is the connection that we have with one another and the effects that we impose on one another, whether we think of it or not, it's automatically. It's really automatically. And as we go deeper and deeper in this, going back to the aspect of work that he said or whatever, we need to take this in consideration. There is no way that we can run from it. And is it scary? Yeah, to a certain degree. But we'll see what we can do, what we need to do, in order for us not to be affected as we have been affected with all the craziness that are go on, goes on around us. And it's okay. When I say craziness, it's because when people create chaos around us or when we create chaos, most of the time in our state right now is that, that we want to create chaos. We just don't know any better. We don't know it because if we did, even when the person is purposely, purposely doing something, if the person know a little bit better, they wouldn't do it. If they were able to analyze the consequences of their thoughts, even though it's going to be a thousand years from now, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> Excuse me. They would not do it. We'll talk more about it. <laughs> Even though I already heard and uh, get some feelings that some of us will not agree with that thought. And I don't to a certain degree too. So we're on the same level. That's why we're here. Mental reflexes set the stage for the reaction of emotions. Emotionalism creates ideas. Ideas determine attitudes and words that command our actions. This is the part that Daniel likes, talking about emotions, right, Daniel? <laughs> What is he trying to say? When we exchange ideas, right, the, this mental reflexes, like with the little boy looking, I believe that was a boy. Yes, or maybe, I don't know. It's a baby, the baby, was actually looking at the, the, the mirror, right? You're exchanging ideas. I'm pretty sure you guys exchange ideas looking at the mirror as well. Look how pretty, yeah. right? Oh my God, I don't like this hair. Oh, I need to cut my hair, right? Something is appearing over here. I need to kind of take care of there. I need to clip the hair here, do that, right? We have this conversation. And we send these vibrations, right? These, and we're connecting with ourselves. We're exchanging ideas. And the more you say you're beautiful, guess what? No matter how ugly you are, you will believe on that lie. <laughs> In the same way, if we tell ourselves we're beautiful the way we are, and we start accepting ourselves, and we see the acceptance of others as well. I, I pose both examples because both examples does exist. They do exist. 
we tend to attack ourselves. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like this, right? The lady sometimes, exactly, you ask, the nose is this way, the nose is that way. It happens. Until one day we say, enough is enough. I'm not going to call myself ugly anymore. I am who I am, and that's it. Whether so-and-so likes it or the world doesn't like it, I don't care. I like myself. We have to respect ourselves. So I didn't say purposely saying calling anybody ugly. So, But it's the idea of that the mental reflexes that set the stage for the, re for the reaction of emotions. Because with those mental reflexes, we receive the impulses of the emotions. And then we do what? We react, right? Creating other ideas, and then we create actions that perhaps are not so in accordance to what we study here, to what the individual learns at church, or with the mother or the grandmother, but in society, acts completely differently. The emotions that we create on the, under this reflex. We're talking about ourselves looking in the mirror. Imagine when we do that with one another. It, it's more and more and more and more because the battle usually takes a while before it stops. And we do this constantly. We are driving and somebody cuts you off, what do you want to do? The emotions, <laughs> you want to pass that person, you want to go faster, you want to do this, you want to prove that your car has a better engine, and it goes on and on and on until somebody reacts, until something happens, right? That's why the actions, as we learn, have what? Results that perhaps we have to work through many, many reincarnations for us to make it right again. Everything starts with the thoughts. Excuse me. And here's the roadblock, which is good to extent to an extent, but it's also very detrimental to us. No one can transcend the resources of their own mind beyond the level of progress they have already attained by mere improvisation. However, we are all affected by each other's mental reflexes according to our capacity of assimilation. In a way, it's good. Because sometimes we think that, oh, it would be so nice to go to Jupiter. And we learn with Spiritism that Jupiter is uh, harbors, if we can say that way, a higher class, a higher class of spirits that we are here on Earth. Imagine if we try to go to a place like that. They're going to look at us and like, oh, no, Leo? No, 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 not yet, not yet. And we would like to take jumps, right? In order for me to run a marathon, Guess what? I need to start with one mile first before I can get to the 23.6, whatever that is, right? Or 26.3, right? I need to run that first mile. There is no way that I can get to that 26. We can't jump. And if we try to jump, we get hurt. The muscles of the mind, of the heart, is not ready for it yet, right? It's little by little. However, we are all affected by each other's mental reflexes according to our capacity of simulation. This is not bad. Even though we receive the impulses, whether negative or po positive, from others, this is how we learn. To get to a Jupiter position, <laughs> we need to learn with what's around us. It's so petty of the person who says, oh, I can't stand these people, I can't stand this, I can't stand that situation. Well, think. Work it out. Why are you there? Why are you connected with those individuals? Can you teach something? Can you learn something? As we try to be a little bit more humble, right? With that assimilation, with all the difficulty that you're going through, perhaps something else will come towards you that you will feel a little bit better, that you will feel in that safe zone, okay, this is what I like to do. But guess what? Even in those safe zones that we, are, that we create around our lives, Something's going to happen that's going to push you out. That's going to say, enough is enough, you need to go out. Because we can't stay, escape from our evolutionary path. We cannot escape from that. The principle of mental reflex is at the core of life, and we are all affected, we all affect each other in creation. That in turn is a reflection of the objectives of the creator. God did not put us together in society for no reason. But I can, the chair's blue, I can learn with the chair, yes, you know, the parallel you know, legs and everything.
but that's pretty much what the leg will, will give me. Now, with Aloisio, he can teach me a bunch of things. He has a beautiful young daughter, right? Very wise. And he can teach me something as well. How did you get to that point? Because I can use some of that I those ideas on how he applied himself at home to help his daughter with my daughters as well. Much more, much more than I can learn from the, from the chair. This is just an example, Luisa. <laughs> much more that we, and we take these things for granted. And it's part of the creation. It's not something out there that we are being posed to live with one another, that we're imposed to feel the reflexes of others. This is how we evolve. There is a limit on everything. Even, th when, even though there is a limit on the chair, there will be a limit of learnings that we can receive here on Earth. That's why when we sleep, we go to other places, where at least we wish to go to other places that we can learn, right? Continue with the classes sometimes that we have here. The intelligent sleep. Let me connect with my mentors so I can learn a little bit more about this. I was asking, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, please help. <laughs> because I try, I'm trying to understand a little bit more of this topic. And this is what happens to us. Now, now going, I believe this is going to, um, yes, our, our will, the second chapter, okay, which is entitled Our Will. Emmanuel actually separates our mind, and I'll use, I'll use the words. We can compare the human mind, which is the living mirror of awakened consciousness, to a large office subdivided in, into several departments. He doesn't go into all of the departments, but some of them. He said there is actually, uh, and yet other departments that define the many functions of the soul. We're going to go through some that he mentioned, and here it is. Department of desire. This is us. We all desire something in our lives, right? Where purposes and aspirations are at the at work is stimulating us to activity. We all have, at least we try to find a purpose, and we have several aspirations, and we do things. I aspire this, therefore I have to do something. I um, I would like to, um, my purpose in life is to do ABC, so I have to do something that will get me there. Department of Intelligence, which expands evolutionary and together, evolution, evolutionary and together the riches of ideals and sensitivity. This uh, intelligence more is more for what we do with what we see, for example, technology, right? Or taking a raw metal from the earth and doing something better with it. Department of Imagination, slowly joining together the riches of ideals and sens sensitivity. Department of Memory, where archives of our experiences are kept and yet other departments that define the many functions of the soul, as we mentioned. So four departments here. But here is a however, a but with the tuxedo, right? There is another one that he mentions that is very important. Anyone would like to guess? What do we talk about over and over and over and over? Not quite. Not quite. Because he explains here about the, we already talked about the emotions, but not quite the emotion. For this to work, what do we need? For our life to work, to keep going. Hmm. The cabinet of the will. The will is the intelligent, excuse me, enlightened and vigilant manager that supervises all sectors of our mental activities. <laughs> Joanna De Angelis have mentioned that, um, in actually, I believe in in um, happy life that we have to exercise our will, right? Exercise it. And if you can get certain things done, keep, keep trying. Going. We're not trying. We're not exercising our will hard enough, and we have to do so. In order for these cabinets, and we'll see a little bit more, to work, just like we see a very well-organized uh, institution to work, they need uh, the will. Let us take our mind, taking a step, not a step back, but analyzing this idea on how everything works and analyze some of these forces that we find on Earth. Electricity, 
and magnetism. Electricity is dynamic energy. What we see right now running through the wires is dynamic because it's constantly flowing, right? In order for the water to come out of the faucet, it has to flow freely, right? Otherwise, if there was no free movement, the water wouldn't come out. In other words, there's got to be some way for the air to come out, to, to go out so the water spits out. Otherwise, it would just stop everything. So it's dynamic. It's always flowing. Magnetism, a, mag a magnet, think of a magnet, is static energy. Because the, uh, the magnet has energy. It was somehow charged, that piece of metal, that now if you get near another metal, it will connect. Just a rough, a rough idea for us to think on how this is. But it's energized. Thought is an electromagnetic force. Let us think of ourselves now, real quick. Sometimes we think that we are it, right? And us, by ourselves, we can conquer all, we can do all, um, that we don't receive the influences of others. We are, I'm Leo, I'm the man, right? Let us think of ourselves as this magnet. Because if we are thought, considering that life, thought is life, thought is an electromagnetic force, let us think of ourselves as a, 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 a magnet. Whatever I come in contact with, I will do either two things, connect or, or repulse, repel, right? It's this constant thing happening all the time. Think of the situations that we have in our lives now. <laughs> what do we do? We connect, most of the time we connect. Because it's really hard yet to repel. When we repel, we actually do it in such a way that not only hurts others, but hurts ourselves as well. So at the end of the day, what are we doing? We're connecting. Because the moment that you give thought to something, that you analyze something, you're already connected. You're already connected. Oh, I don't like this. You already thought about it. You already made your mind about it. So you connected with it. The repulsion may come later, but it already happened. And imagine now us as this magnet, magnet. Have you ever seen a piece of metal that is, this wire goes around it? What are they doing there? What is electronic doing there? They're charging that piece of metal, right? So imagine now thought going through us, the, 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 um, the, the environment going through, going through us. What happens? It charges us. It makes it either more powerful or perhaps sometimes it brings us down. And it happens in our exchanges of everyday life. Nothing wrong. But to see how our surroundings are already showing us all the concepts that we have in life, it's already showing us what we're going through. And this is not bad. The problem is how do we control it? The issue that we have is how we control thought. How do we control this force, electromagnetic force? Thought, electricity, and magnetism join together in all the manifestations of universal life, creating gravity and affinity, a simulation and dissimulation in the multiple fields of form that are used, used again, no, just used, by the spirit in its pilgrimage, pilgrimage, pilgrimage to reach the supreme goals outlined by the divine plans. Again and again and again, Emmanuel, so we don't lose this point, we are in this world, that's why we put the road here, to reach God. In our interactions, in our difficulties, day-to-day -day difficulties, we are reaching to God. Sometimes we take for granted the things that we learn in, excuse me, basic math in school. And later on, we realize how wonderful it is to put one and one together. Some people may not know that one and one is two, and we take for granted. How many of us, sometimes we learn something from the grandmother that later on in life, you will say, oh my gosh, my grandmother told me this, right? We, are, we say this because the little that sometimes we think it's so little, so petty, guess what? We'll save life late, later on. And we are in the ascens, ascen, ascension to God, to our creator. We don't want to lose focus of this because... Again, in order for us to think well and to be well, right? Because the, the, the being is the, uh, the, the product of thinking first, we always have to connect with our creator. We may not understand God well, but we do understand 
the good people around us, the good things around us. We can at least discern that part. And the more we do, the better we'll be in our lives. And then Emmanuel brings this idea of the rudder, right? The, the, the steering way. That's why we brought this huge rudder over here. This is actually the propel of the um, a huge ship and the, the rudder right behind it, giving direction when he says that the brain is the dynamo which generates mental energy according to its own capacity of reflection. However, within the will, we have the control which directs in, its, in, in this or that way. So establishing causes that will determine the problems of our destiny. Remember when we talk about the emotions, our reactions to, towards one another and towards ourselves? And when we act freely, not really thinking, to put in other words, we're not using the will. Because perhaps the reflex, Chris can say something to me, and I can say, okay, that was a blow, but I'm gonna take, use my will to steer my emotions to a condition that, number one, I don't get upset. Number two, I don't get upset with him because he's also ascending to God. He may not be wise enough at that moment to say something that is detrimental to himself because, remember, he's in front of the mirror. He's not just with talking with Leo. He's in front of the mirror. And I'm giving an example to Chris, please. And he's also talking to me. Number the, the third thing that I would like to invite everyone to think about is that perhaps he said it to himself, perhaps he said it to me, but this vibration will affect the whole universe. And that sometimes we take for granted as well the, the collective calamities that we have in our own earth. How does it happen? Why is tho those group of people involved with A, B, and C that happens, are they unfortunate? Does these things happen just because? I don't think so. There's got to be a much bigger reason for it. But again, the rudder. Remember the rudder. On a, in a, on a big ship, sometimes you have seen this on Facebook or perhaps on um, um, YouTube, or you can Google it. When a ship, a huge ship, they are all on the sea and there is a, a, a great storm, you will notice that the ship, they always travel against the, the, the waves. They will never go sideways. The waves are coming this way. They're not going to go this way. They're going to face it right towards the waves because that's the only way that they can actually go through the waves, whether the waves actually go over them in some of these ships. Some people get hot or horrified when they see it, but this is how they travel. Airplanes, when they go up or when they go down, they go against the wind. They never go, they never flow with the wind. They always go up and down against the wind. So think of this, these two analogies. When we have to, when we go through something, let's face it. It's not that we are trying to be brave here, but let's stop and think. How can I steer my emotions? Am I gonna run away? Sometimes you have to take a break. Yes, sometimes we have to think and stop, but we need to face it. The best way for us to face a situation, face a fear, is to go through it. That's why we go through several types of um, helps that we can find now on, on the planet Earth to say, okay, perhaps we're not going to face it right away, but what caused it? How can we analyze the situation? How can we see it differently, right? But let's face it, the rudder. Let's not let emotions just take control of ourselves, but really remember that our will is the rudder of our emotions. We go back again to this idea of the will. Without which, remember the cabinets or the departments that the Emmanuel mentioned, Department of Desire? Look what happens if we don't steer with our will. Desire may err and go astray, incurring debts, requiring centuries of suffering and restitution because of our petty desires. Department of Intelligence. Intelligence may be caught in the vices of criminality. Department of Imagination. Imagination may create dangerous monsters of darkness. And then finally, Department of Memory. Memory, although faithful to its functions of registering what it receives in conformity with the destination given to it by nature, may fall into deplorable neglect and inefficiency. We need will. We need to exercise the will. 
it's hard to get up in the morning, try another time, and another time, and another time. Perhaps one day, 2019, we'll be waking up before the alarm goes off. <laughs> Just small things, and we take it for granted, right? But we need the will. We need this, um, this cabinet to make sure that the other cabinets are functioning well. And we will see again in all of the departments of our lives. Emmanuel brushes off from these four departments, but as he says, there are other departments. We perhaps have other situations in our lives that we need to work on, right? Not the intelligence perhaps, but the desire. Not the desire, but our, our emotions as well. And on and on and on and on. But if we have the will to change, or at least to face and say, okay, I need to change something, steer myself a little bit to a different direction. It doesn't matter what others are saying or thinking, but I am in control of this physical body, of my emotions. To finalize this part of the will, only the will is sufficiently strong to sustain the harmony of our spirit, of the, of the spirit, of us, each one of us. If we want harmony, let's exercise our will. If we are not able to sleep well, and I'm bringing harmony right now with some of the issues that perhaps I came in contact um, this recently of not being able to sleep, not myself, um, but we need to create a schedule in our lives. I go to bed at this time, right? And I try to wake up at this time. Try to create a schedule that perhaps that we will, you know, be able to sleep better. Or I need to do... Um, um, whatever, something in my life. I wanted to exercise. Since we're still in January, you're still New Year's resolution. <laughs> I need to exercise. You need to get up early. Perhaps the first week is going to be miserable. But afterwards, if you do so and you apply your will on what you already thought, guess what? It's going to work out. The different departments, everything will connect with you. Even your schedule, say, oh, my, now I have time for it. You always had time. You just made a schedule. Everything's working out for, for you now. Of course, it cannot stop mental reflections. Very important. If anything, let us listen to this. Of course, it cannot stop mental reflections wh whenever these are produced by contacts with others because attunement is an unbreakable law. But it can impose disciplinary control over the elements it governs so as to maintain them cohesive in the service of goodness. In other words, what Rita thinks of me or whatever she puts towards the universe, I can't stop. We can't stop. We're thinking this dynamo, as he said. We cannot stop people from, from thinking the same way we cannot stop thinking. Now, what I do with it is completely different. And this is the catch, right? How do I react to everyone else's impulses, ideas, reflexes? How do we do this? We have to apply our will. This is how we're going to steer our boat, our huge ship, to make sure that we're facing whatever we have to face because we're not um, uh, victims of the universe. We're here together for a reason. The same thought that allow me to have this physical body or go through the difficulties that I have to face in this physical life is the thought that put us together here tonight, right? And that is good for all of us. That is positive for all of us. We don't, we don't want us to take this in a negative sense or, or to be always at guard, but to do this right here, to have this harmony to have this harmony. Don't think that harmony that we will have on earth is sitting at the beach <laughs> doing yoga all the time, but it can be a lot of the times. When perhaps we utilize our will to do what? To meditate a day, one, 10 minutes a day, perhaps five minutes. We talk about vastly, right, uh, last year about the idea of meditating, find this moment for ourselves. It may not be every day, some days we'll be, oh gosh, I have to stop and pray. I have to stop and meditate. But if we apply our will, you will have that opportunity. So then it, we come to the conclusion at our third chapter, which is really interesting. And Emmanuel, again, uses um, the, the analogy of an institution, right? A, some kind of, we can put any kind of business, right? And he says the following, because... We think of this idea of will, and it's all about me 
It's all about how I desire, how I choose. But even in the will, we need the cooperation. But listen to this. In order for someone to successfully and efficiently administer an important organization, and it's, it is not enough to have been nominated for the position. That boss, that person who has been nom nominated, needs to have some elements that, number one, qualified him to get to that point, right? Sometimes it's not to just to be strong. Sometimes it's not to be imposing. But all the qualities that perhaps will be necessary, look what I'm saying now, will be necessary to do that job. We don't see this often. We see a lot of people being nominated for a lot of things, or sometimes we nominated ourselves for a lot of things that were not on par to it, right? It's very simple for us to look around and, but that's not point fingers. <laughs> because we have been there and we don't want us ourselves to be there later on. But it's for us to analyze that perhaps if somebody's there, they will learn. One day they will learn. The, the thing is, let's not be those individuals. A combination of many excellent qualities needed in order for an enterprise to consolidate and prosper. To administer requires not only authority, but also guidance and discernment. Not only are theory and culture needed, but virtue and clear judgment, as well as a sense of proportion. Sense of proportion. That alone really gets us all uh, confused. But we want to take a step, uh, 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 pr open a parenthesis here, and uh, utilize this idea of a, a, like an economist. And we see this is a picture of um, Adam Smith. I actually have mentioned of Adam Smith here before, an economist and a philosopher as well. And in this book of um, the, the inquiry into the nature and causes of um, the wealth of nations, Adam Smith, the, as an economist, um, he brings example of um, the, the, a pin factory, right? Like actual pins. Um, the pins that we used to, you know, in the, in the past, we used to, you know, put the clothes together and all those things. Sometimes we still use it. But let us think of producing one pin. It's very easy for one person to go and produce one pin. Now let's multiply the necessity of one pin to thousands of pins, right? How do we do it faster and we do it well? Not with one person, but several individuals. And we break down the task of, let us, say, let us say, four tasks, for example. We get the wire. We have not only to strengthen the, water, the wire, which is one, one task. We cut the wire, right? The second thing that we have to sharpen the end, and then we have to attach the head, right? One person doing all these four functions, it would take forever. Can it be done? It will be done. But if we have now four individuals doing each task, perhaps we'll get to those thousand pins much faster, right? Very simple. Society thinks this way for thousands of years. But we take it for granted. When we see, when we look around all the things that we have at our disposal, we take for granted that we need cooperation. We take for granted the, the, the work, the hard work of women, men, whatever that is out there doing for us. Yeah, we paid a price for it, we worked for it, but hey, if they weren't there, perhaps we didn't even have pins because the demand would be great if there was one person creating one pin. Just for us to think on how thought out, how um, skillful and how uh, uh, the, the amount of work that there is on Earth right now for us to be here. In the physical plane, now let us think on the spiritual plane as well. Because we are also a product of God, God's thought. Just for us to take the, the small things of life and for us to connect with the macro. We're talking about synergy, and I put this down here, which you know, synergy is the interaction of co or cooperation of two or more organizations, substance, or other agents to produce a combination effect greater than the sum of their separate effects, even our physical bodies when we are doing certain movements, right? One muscle do, does one thing and the other muscle does the other. So we can actually move the synergy in our bodies, in everything that we see um, in our in our day-to-day -day lives. I brought this quote that um, Adam Smith brought as well, and I know Yasko will not like that much, but listen to what he said. It's not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regards to their own interest. 
even though there are people on earth <laughs> who thinks that they can do things by themselves and they are the best at it, guess what? They need someone else to buy their product. It's true that a lot of people, they organize themselves that, okay, you know, I, I'm going to sell this product. I'm going to create this because I need something back, right? But if they don't perfect themselves, if they don't do what they're supposed to do well, they're not going to have the help of others to buy their products. But even though that situation starts very selfishly, right? We start our thoughts, our lives selfishly. Guess what? There will be others looking at us and saying, you need to change this or you need to do this way, right? When we get out of here tonight, I'm pretty sure you guys will have a take of the talk that will be different from the others. And perhaps things that I could have done better, that's why we're going to be doing this together, <laughs> to improve in the future. So for me to think, and I'm putting myself as an example, that this talk is the talk, or perhaps is the best way that I could, could have done this, it's not. We improve, right? We need one another. We need this interaction. Enough with this idea of an error, because I think we get it. We're not alone. In our mo innermost world, our will is the captain who cannot afford to neglect this, his duty. Just as an administrator needs the help of good and honest co-workers, likewise, the will, now we go back to the will, cannot do without ponderation and logic as respected counselors in decision-making processes. So as we are applying our will, as we are conducting ourselves well or not, because sometimes we use our will to do things that are not so wisely, there will be others. Because naturally, as we're thinking, as we are conducting our lives, we're doing what? Creating reflexes, right? We're looking in the mirror. We're actually using other as mirrors as well. And we will get impulses back. I don't like this. I don't like the way you behave. I don't like what you said. And that's so. And that's great to know that we have this, cor this corroboration, whether we like it or not. Because sometimes we don't like the ideas. Who said right about criticism? John? Joe, okay. Joseph mentioned, right, the criticism, the idea about criticism, right? Criticism sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it's pretty harsh when we receive it. But we like to criticize. <laughs> we love to criticize. We love to put the taste. A friend that every time we, we, or we are eating something, the person loves to say, you know, it's, it tastes really well, but a little bit more salt, it would be great. It would be perfect. Okay, so then it wasn't perfect. Okay, and we take the, uh, the comment, well, you know, we understand. It's okay, but it's one of those things. We like to make our comments. We like to bring our cooperation to the world, right? <laughs> it's not easy. It's not easy. In order to function properly without any breakdown of harmony, the will in its individual state needs to make use of cooperation in order to clarify its activity. And it's do so. Right? We, always, and we often say here in the Spirit to Center that we, you know, it's always good that we have some of our not so close friends because they're able to tell us things that our closest friends wouldn't say, right? You need to change this. I don't like the way you acted. Whereas some of our friends are like, oh, it's just Leo. You know, don't worry about him, right? But some of the people that, quote, unquote, may not like us so well, they're going to come to us in full force and say, I don't like this. And we think, because it does create that emotion on us. Because if, especially if ended, um, it's going to create that emotion that, okay, maybe, you know, maybe, yes, I need to rethink about this. Sometimes we may come in contact with others that say, eh, I don't care what this person or that person said. Believe me, they do. The emotion was steered. Perhaps they're not paying attention to it now, but later on, they will analyze things a little bit differently. Hopefully, it's not going to take the millennia <laughs> that Emmanuel mentions, because it happens. Some people, they just say, oh, I don't want to deal with this right now. You know, I'll have to deal with, you know, later on in life. I don't care. A lot of people, when they come in contact with spiritism that we talk about the next life, 
they're like, oh, I'll think about this in the next life. <laughs> I'll learn about spiritism in the next life. Since you told me about the next life, I don't want to deal with it right now. I want to deal with things here on earth. It happens. It's common. Whether they say it, verbalize it or not. We are using, utilizing the, the, the pictures of the bees, right? The bee, um, because it, it's to receive the honey, we need the bees. We need this cooperation. And this is the beauty of how we live with one another. The spontaneous cooperation is the supreme ingredient of order. When we do things without a hidden agenda, when we do things for the benefit of all, that as I, yes, I have my bread that I would like to sell as a, a bread maker or a butcher or whatever, as we saw with um, um, Adam Smith, but I know that I need the other person, so I will perfect myself. What, I'm, and what am I trying to sell as far as myself to the world? Because we do this. One of the topics that I came across last year with a discussion that we were having in school is, was about um, um, the, one of the aspects of selling your products. And the, the question was very interesting because what are you trying to sell and what the professor was trying to get into it is how you sell yourself. And this happens naturally. We don't think of selling ourselves in a day-to-day -day basis, but we do it every single day. We get up in the morning, hopefully brush your teeth, because you're not going to be able to sell yourself <laughs> or connect with others if you have bad breath. You comb your hair. You take a shower. You speak well. You conduct yourself well. All these little things will help us connect with one another in a more harmonious way, right? And as we do so, we naturally do what? We also expect from others to be treated the same way. And it's okay. And it's okay. This perfect ex exchange that becomes spontaneous as well. From divine glory to subatomic particles, the universe may be defined as the, a connecting chain of lives that intervene with the great, um, um, greater life. And to finalize, he who helps others with himself will himself be helped and will silently find that this is the most secure formula for readjustment in the evolutionary process. We're not alone. We need one another. So when we talk about thought, when we talk about will, when we talk about the mind, we're in this constant exchange, much needed constant exchange that we cannot run from it. Now, how we act, and mark this as well, not how we react. How we act is how we'll make, is what will make the difference. Instead of saying, okay, I take this, I'll take that. No, we need to act. It's not to be abruptive or it's not to be a, a um, aggressive person or to be on the defense mode all the time, but how are we steering our thoughts? Because as we are, as we say, as we're going, trying to reach north, because intervene with the greater life, if we're trying to reach this north, no matter what happens to me, we're gonna continue going. It, yes, we'll feel, we'll feel sad, we'll cry, we'll need the help of one another, but we need to march on, we need to go, to go on, right? This is the idea, folks, for us to think um, or at least process what we're going through. If we, I have my questions, and I like to pose these questions to one another now, and it's not for you to answer, and I don't have the answers yet, because quite often I do think about this. Why do I go to the Spirit to Center? Why do I have A, B, or C person in my life? Why do I have this job? And in my job, why do I have this difficult individual? Why do I have to deal with this group of people? For those who live in Carroll County, <laughs> knows what I'm talking about. As much as if I were to live in Rio, right? The difficulties that, um, that we would have if I were to stay in Rio, where my hometown. My brother is visiting right now. And he does speak a lot about the situation there because he just recently came from there. And I'm like, wow, it's a different life. It's a different perspective. Even though I was born there, I'm not there now to actually go through those difficulties. I do think about these things. 
what can I learn with this, and how can I present myself, not just brushing my teeth in the morning, <laughs> how can I present myself with my thoughts, with my will to change the environment? I'm not going to do great things. Don't think that we're going to do great things, because we're not. That is like, like you know, trying to cross that barrier that we have in front of us when we want to do too much, trying to run the marathon before we run the first mile. We're not going to change much, but the little that we can change as we are exchanging reflexes will change others little by little. And we're all ascending. We're all going back to our dear creator. Bless you. We will continue with this in the next month. We'll talk about in instruction, education, and faith. Again, things that we talked about, and I hope that you, many of you can, especially if we get the books here in English, can read, uh, read the, the, the chapters that we just covered, but also read these next three chapters so we can talk about it, so we can actually discuss towards the end as well. Okay? I would like to open up um, for us to um, ask questions, make comments, uh, bring highlights. As I requested, and I'm going to you know, say this again and again as we go through this series, this series is that how can this improve my life? And remember, even if you think about as, as the baker, right, that you're changing yourself, <laughs> guess what? You're going to be changing others. It's a consequence. And that's the consequence that we would like to keep in mind that we would like to keep with one another. Questions, comments that you have. Yes, go. Excuse me. Uh, maybe, but let me choose some. <laughs> that was a good topic. Yes, about that issue that uh, we, uh, you said that I did not agree. Um, it's because we discussed a little bit uh, on Thursday about this business that when you have some, you're an entrepreneur, you're thinking about the profit. That is the will, that's the reason that the uh, entrepreneur is driven. And I disagree that uh, he had first to focus in the consumer, if that product, how much that product will be impacting my consumers. If they're going to emotionally, they're going to relate to the product that I'm offering, can be a uh, bread, can be, you know, a wine, a glass of wine, or, or some uh, electrodomestic, uh, uh, you know, tools, whatever. Uh, and not just thinking first the profit, that because the moment he forget about the, the value of the quality of the product that he's offering, his business is going to go, that's my way to think, it's going to go downhill. The other thing that you call the tension, which I feel in our days is going to be more and more difficult to be the boss, which before was much easier. You just assign this job is you, you, you do this and that. In our days, we know all this emotional intelligence. So we have to know the emotion, the background of each of my partner if we want to succeed. So we cannot just uh, dismiss that, say, Sarah has a quality that uh, Luciana has other quality. I may be, if I'm a very intelligent person, perspicacious, I may use and try to get her to get her best because she has that quality and Luciana has another quality. So in a partnership, I feel now to be a boss is going to be more and more difficult, more because also more women and different age are involved in the business. I don't know what to think about in your core, uh, in your you know, study, you're doing a formal course about it. What is the future? What's going on in terms of future leadership? It's going to race, right? <laughs> no race. <laughs> it's. I like the 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 word that you use, entrepreneurship, right? 
someone who starts a business. Um, and most of, the, most of the companies nowadays, they are giving value to that point that I'm not going to do this just for because I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it well. And, you know, in producing the item and storaging the item and, and, and delivering the item and selling the item, all these different areas of businesses, since we're talking about business here, um, and as you asked, um, we will find individuals who can do well. And they don't do it because uh, they went to school for it, but they develop, they have the uh, appropriate emotion or considerations towards that part of the business. And it's growing tremendously with the help of women that used to be segregated. Now you cannot do this. You should be in this place, in that place. Let's not go into detail. Um, but it, it's happening more and more. And that is due to the consideration that we now are putting to, yeah, Leo, perhaps, he's a good person to do A, but not B. I will develop myself um, to do B throughout time, but right now I can do A really better. And that's how um, we, you know, as not only as individuals, but as society is as well, we produce certain items and we buy, and to, to, uh, we produce and sell certain items, and we buy other items from other um, um, countries because they do much. They can do it much better than ourselves. That's we, how we exchange, and that that's how we import. That's how that's how we export as well. But this, I'm glad that we're looking into this state up here, like in the macro, right? Because everything starts with this simple analysis that you mentioned. That yes. Perhaps you know I don't have to be hitting you know the table or the the note the same way. I can do it in different ways, and I can do it much faster, and I can do it much better, be more much more effective with our lives. And this is also how we live better lives. That I don't need to let this emotion touch my heart the way it's touching. It's gonna touch me, yes, because we're exchanging right uh, thoughts and 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 emotions. But it's, it, I can actually steer myself to such a way that not only I will understand myself, but I will understand the other person as well. So I'm trying to break down into levels. And yes, I did utilize the, uh, the example that we talked about on Thursday. Um, again, to exemplify for some of us, uh, or for all of us really, on how things perhaps started back in the day. The cave time there where people were just, uh, look, I need, I have this product, I need to sell. Um, I want something for me. Even though that individual is thinking about themselves only, it's just an exemplification that we need someone else to buy the product. And if I want to do this rep repetitive, guess what? Yes, you need to respect others. And we have reached that, that, that level. And we reach different levels that I cannot even conceive yet or understand. I'm just going to tag in some thoughts I heard last night uh, with that new program, Christ, Christian Manapur, I cannot pronounce her last name. She's the, what is her name? Christian Manapur? Yeah, it's close. <laughs> yeah, um, because Yasko used our favorite new words, emotional intelligence, which weren't even around when I was growing up. And the discussion last night centered on men and women, because you know, just as women are entering careers in greater numbers and really wanting parity with men, there's a corresponding change going on in men. And the challenge for men is, this is the person's contribution last night, men typically respond to emotions when they're strong. And in the socialization of young boys, um, traditionally, to be a man, was just to be a rock, to be strong, to push through. And you couldn't stop and cry. You could never be viewed as weak. So all of this is in the changing phase right now, too. The reflexes that man is receiving from women, right? Whether some men like or not. <laughs> This is the everlasting changing that we are going through right now. In the past, we had to show our forces, our energy, and it was okay back then. Women did what they were supposed to do. When I say okay, it's because how we thought. I'm not saying that it was correct. Please don't take me wrong. 
But today we see that perhaps that other individual has a value, has an emo emotional intelligence that we can utilize for other functions, perhaps that I cannot yet. The ability that women have to multitask is beyond my imagination. <laughs> Even though people say, a lot of scholars say that, oh, pe um, um, human beings, they cannot multitask. Yes, women can, believe me. Especially if they have to think while they're doing something, they can remember things that I cannot remember, right? It's amazing. It's a joke, but it's really um, on how we can analyze our one another and, yes, put it to good use. The same way we have to look at ourselves and say, what's good inside of me? What emotions, what feelings, what, the things that, what, what are the things that I have to get rid of, right? So we help one another. The same way that man nowadays is receiving and, and connecting or creating emotions uh, with all the changes that is happening in society, especially with women, guess what? We can do with one another, vice versa. Whereas in the past, there used to be this way, and the future will be much different. And if we're open for this change, for this analysis, we will do better off. That's why the children, I mentioned to the children, think of these things. Look at your parents, look at your grandparents, what happened then, analyze it, make it better. Adapt, right? Make it better. Because hopefully we made it better than our parents, and our parents did better than their parents, and so on and so forth. I think we did. <laughs> I actually, let me put it this way, I am certain that we did. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. So this is, um, if we don't have any final comments, if we don't have any um, other thoughts. One more, you ask, why not? <laughs> It's just to compliment this, my thought that I, I read like end of the last year that they are analyzing now how the new generation compared to our generation is thinking about what is a good job. In my generation, if they offer $100 more, they would jump from one company to the other. That's what we were moving around the different is money. In our days, in this, our days, this new generation is not any longer just money. It's how that company treats you in terms of a human being, a social being, how this company is involved in making the society a better thing. So I imagine it's because, they, because of the female, the, male, uh, the female input. But the new generation is thinking different. The values are different. It's not any longer money, how much they pay. Thank you. That is true. The, the, on how um, we see and perceive things and how we perceive money, too, because it's not about the, the green, because they're not green anymore. They're all different colors. It's, it's, you know, it's not about you know, the, the money that are received, but the quality of life that it will have. And to extend a little bit on that, I urge, I urge the, the young individuals to do things that you like to do, that you find pleasure doing so. Um, the money is great. The money will come. Um, um, whatever you want to do um, will come if you truly dedicate yourself to something that you like to do. Sometimes we don't have choices. We have to face certain things that for a specific time of our lives that it will get us to the next step. But also ultimately, have that thought, I would like to do this, and I'm going to do the best that I can uh, being a janitor, for example, being something that perhaps people don't think that they want to do because they don't, will, get, will not get in the, the enough money, or perhaps it's not the appropriate job. If you do it, do it well, and do something that you like. I think that's a good idea for us to change. And we're going to talk about work a couple months from now, and we'll see that how important this is that whether we're doing what we like or not, that we do as well. So we'll stop right here. We'll definitely, um, again, um, try to learn more and more as we go along. But I would like to finalize with one passage of the book. And this is just for, to close this passage. We're not going to repeat this, but to really um, align ourselves with this thought. Thought in life, again, is at the end of the introduction that Emmanuel gave, in, on February 11th, 1958. Thought in life is what we have called in this spiritual 
world. And it is with the same title that we offer it to our struggling fellow beings, temporarily interned in the physical sphere. Its purpose is to inform you yet again that is our thought process being a reflection of ourselves which creates the kind of life we lead. Until one day, throughout the millennia, through the millennia, excuse me, we shall identify ourselves with the infinite wisdom and infinite love that constitute the thought and life of our Father. Our ascension to God on how we connect with one another. So we'll ask Danny to put the music on and to turn on the light, turn off the light, so we can pray together. And we ask everyone as we are praying.